What's up, guys? It's it is Jordan from Fighting Fighting for My Boys. I hope that everyone's having a great day. And I'm here with my friend Laura, which I'll let her do the talking now. Hi, I'm Laura Smith, SLP mommy of apraxia, author of Overcoming Apraxia, and so excited to be here again for basically year two of our adult apraxia panels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as if you guys did not know, just like how Laura mentioned that she that she has a book out as I'm coming out with my first book in, in, in the series called Jordan's World called The Boy Who Couldn't Speak Yet. And it's coming out May 28th and you can add it to your wish list on Amazon. Nice, May 28th. That's amazing. Congrats. Like number. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's introduce our panel. I'm going to start up here with Kelsey. Hi, I'm Kelsey and I have apraxia and I'm also an SLP I'm going on year two. Awesome. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> Breaking barriers, baby. And, and below we have Shelby. Hi. And I have apraxia, and I am going to be going to graduate school to become a SLP. And awesome. we're so proud of you, too. <laughs> yes, so proud of all of you guys. Um, yeah. For me, especially, I'm just so proud of each and every one of you. This is what, as a parent, you worry about is you worry that you know, your kid has apraxia, you know, it's going to be a lifelong neurological disorder. Society judges oh. people based on how they speak. And so I know. And so it's just, <laughs> you worry so much though. And, um, you know, this is why these panels are so amazing. Cause we have like three amazing, successful, um, people who are goal driven and determined. And I'm just, you know, you. so excited that you're here to share this with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm so sure. I'm going to find my questions here. So basically why Jordan and I thought this panel would be cool is, uh, well, Jordan, do you want to kind of talk about, I found, I got sent a video of Shelby yeah. from an apraxia mom in California. Yeah. Um, Shelby had a video on TikTok that kind of went viral and it was pretty random. I know. It was amazing. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> and it's, and it was, you have sent me a, that night and yeah it was then like, I sent it to you and Kelsey at, <laughs> yeah and it was like look at this and I just was like Laura what's up because at times Laura will send me random things <laughs> about other things and then I just clicked and then I'm like oh wow this is awesome and it's then I saw uh, where um, she was getting some criticism and such and that's the world that we kind of live in if you post anything on socials about um being open about having a disability of any kind um a person's going to have um something to say but she spoke in such a way to that person that I was just shocked and I just was like wow like this was really awesome so I do edit her and she was like, oh, wow, it's um, my SLPs had actually told me a bounty, which I was shocked that <laughs> SLPs know me. So as I just was like, awesome, let's, let's do a, you know, Zoom. I trust my gut and I act on inspir inspiration and such. Um, so that's how I found Shelby. How you found what? Shelby. Shelby, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah, I... and then uh, I, I didn't know that you were, uh, you told Shelby that you would do a Zoom with her, and um... <laughs> <laughs> I just go fast. I'm just like, hey, I want to do a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but Kelsey saw that, and I was like, oh yes, this is the perfect Zoom. Like, you know, mm. Kelsey's an SLP, Shelby's gonna yeah. be an SLP, I'm an SLP, and Jordan, you have apraxia, and um, you know, are good, a huge advocate, so. Like this Thank is going to be fun, I think. <laughs> I think it is too. I think it's going to be a bunch of fun. Okay. So um, let's see. I just told them I was looking for my questions. Do you, let's oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I know. I was supposed to be ready. And now I have a million emails sending you guys the Zoom link. 
<laughs> okay. All right. All right. So this is for again. both you, Shelby and Kelsey. Um, mm -hmm. What made you want to go into the field of speech? So I'm going to start with Kelsey since uh, you have already kind of been through this road. Um, I, I feel like most people um, assume I go, I went into it because of my apraxia and going through speech therapy. And that's like a big portion why, um, but I was pretty nervous to do speech with apraxia and dyspraxia and everything else. And so I was really interested in doing psychology, but then I took a bunch of classes and in high school and learned that I really just like cognitive side and language development mostly, or psych mm -hmm. and language development mostly. And so then I kind of went into the realm of linguistics. Um, and then before undergrad, I was like, nah, I'll just do speech. Wow. <laughs> that's so yeah. crazy that you chose psychology because awesome. so did Jordan, right, Jordan? Yeah, that's what mine is then too. So that's initially what you started with too. That's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, then I was speech language, hearing sciences and psych double major. And then I dropped psych because I didn't want to take calculus or chemistry. <laughs> I do not blame you. <laughs> and I knew I wanted to be a speech yeah, therapist, so <laughs> I didn't need a psych degree. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Shelby, well, how about yeah. you? Um, so I wanted to be a speech pathologist since I was a little girl. Really? Um, yeah, like oh. it's my dream go um dream job since I was a little girl, but no thought I could do it. Um, I had like amazing SLPs growing up in elementary school and seeing how they affected my life I want to affect other people's life and show them that they can do what they want to do even if they have a disorder or not and Aww. it was struggle it was hard I didn't think I can do it and I remember sitting down with my dad and I was like okay I want to do this like do you think I can and do you believe in me I can and then he was like yes 100% and my whole family was behind me too and so I decided to go for it. And so far it's working out. <laughs> That's so awesome. Love I'm so that. happy to hear that you had a good relationship with your SLPs growing up. Mm -hmm. Like definitely, I'm sure Kelsey and I both want to like impart that to children we see. Um, and then Jordan, <laughs> you had a mixed experience, um, right? yeah, yeah, mine weren't so good, but that's for a different book. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's go to our next question then. So I also wanted to know, um, well, I mean, I, without getting into it too much, um, like Jordan said, when you have any sort of disability and you put yourself out there, you are open to some criticisms. And without saying who said up. them or where they came from, um, what are just some criticisms you've gotten and how did you handle them? And either one of you can go first. Um, I can go. Um, so since I just got diagnosed with apraxia, I was misdiagnosed with articulation disorder. So I got um, asked a lot, how can I teach kids how to speak correctly if mm. I can't speak correctly myself? Mm. And usually like when that happens, I'm like, okay, um, was not expecting that. And I just kind of like nod my head and I was like, well, like, I just want to um, see if I can change the world and show them, like, mm -hmm. it's okay to, to not be perfect and that mm -hmm. everyone's Absolutely. imperfect and that. So it's okay to not be 100% perfect all the time. And yeah. Yeah. And as we also, um, it's that whole thing about perfection isn't real. And we all talk in different ways. And there's no one way to talk right or her correct to those R's correct so those people are dumb if I'm honest with you <laughs> um, being blunt but I can say that because I'm not going to be an SLP <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kelsey have you ever gotten any criticisms that you want to talk about um I probably just have to echo what Shelby was saying I think just um, you know, people just, you know, if I can't, like, dip songs are really hard for me or things like that. Um, just how can I, I help a, a kid say them if I, if I can't? Um, but I don't know how much, like, 
I don't have like a specific story to go along with. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're fine. Can you explain what a diphthong is to people who aren't SLP? <laughs> um, a diphthong is when you have like two vowels together. Um, like the one I went back to speech in undergrad and I really worked on like a full semester just working on like the AI sound like in nail or pale. Um, <laughs> but those are really hard for me. Yeah. I remember when I first met you, you had told me that was your heart as a diphthong too, still, even then. So yeah, I've been trying. I'm, try I'm still trying on it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good to me. <laughs> did. Um, okay. So Jordan, do you have a question for them or do you want me to ask my next one? Um, as I do have a question in mind um, and that's kind of what has what what has been like the biggest misconception people have had and I'm really curious about this because people can have all sorts of ones I know that I have plenty that I could tell but I would rather hear from y'all uh, maybe you may have had some other ones I would say the biggest one that happened to be most like an undergrad, for example, which means there's people from all over going to school, is everyone thought I was an international student and they would ask me what country I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, it would just be like in passing or something like, oh, where are you from? And then it's like, do I just say something different from a different country or do I just try to explain what's going on, but I also don't know this person. So yeah, so it's really not like, I don't really know how to answer that question <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um kind of basing off of Kelsey I, I got asked like um where I'm from too because of my accent mm -hmm. I had and mm -hmm. I never knew how to answer that I just mm -hmm. say like oh I'm from um Michigan or like I just say where I'm from and like I mm -hmm. um then like if they keep asking me like why do I have an accent I just say like I have a speech disorder mm -hmm. and then they get quiet and they feel bad for saying it but like <laughs> That is my favorite feeling in time. <laughs> when they just get that. Um, yeah, Jordan, I feel like you live for those moments sometimes. <laughs> I uh, kind of, okay, maybe at times because people can be so rude and I'll just Yeah, it's be when blunt. they're rude, right? Yeah, yeah. It is when they are rude and I'll be blunt and I'll be like, I have a speech dis disorder and I'll just say it like blunt and they're just like I'm so sorry and I'm like it's cool you didn't know yeah and then just move on yeah I love that like just advocating for yourself you know like it does make mm. me wonder Jordan's talked to so many people who like won't order at a drive through or they mm. like limit themselves they limit oh, their living <laughs> I know you don't. That's why I love you. I love yeah, you guys don't. for that. <laughs> yeah. So we just like, if you could give a brief overview of what it was like growing up with a speech disorder from both of your perspectives, that would be interesting. I love that. It's like, um, I'm sorry. It's, I don't know at what age I really realized that I was different than anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. I think that like I had you know good school, good support system, good family, and so I, I didn't really realize it at first. Like I know I went to speech, but I thought everyone went to speech. No, oh. I didn't realize that people didn't go to speech or OT or anything else um, until probably like first second grade, and that's when people started you know, noticing and kids on the playground, I try to get me to say um, certain words I knew I couldn't say a lot, like railroad, I remember it was like one of them or rabbit, how those are sounds. They would just ask me to say over and over. And that's kind of when I started noticing the difference. And then slowly kids started questioning like, oh, why are you pulled out? Like, why do you go with that person? Um, and I, I started noticing, I guess, more of the differences then. Yeah. Yeah. What about it you, Shelby? What was it like so for you? Funny. 
Um, so um, growing up, like in elementary school, through like fourth through third grade, I was going to speech and I loved it. And that's how I was great outgoing, oh. talkative, classrooms and that. And no one pointed it out to me that I taught differently. Mm. And then in fourth grade, this is where um, it happened. And I was at recess and this mm. person said some mean things to me. And mm. after that moment, I shut down and I never talked in class again. And oh. then, uh, I was very shy, um, did not like talking at all in front of people because like I didn't want to get made fun of. And um, it really like affected me growing up because like I grew up very shy oh. and not talkative. And but like I was still like talkative to my friends and that like I would like if I trust them, I would talk to them and I don't mm. care. They don't judge me. Uh, stuff they don't like question how I talk so like I wish more people were more like that but they're mm-hmm. not so yeah yeah did you have friends Kelsey yeah I had a um, I had a pretty good uh and a lot of close friends growing up I was pretty lucky with that yeah that's good Jordan you talk about having that one close friend that was like yeah a awesome really for good you. friend yeah <laughs> yeah Okay, so um, when you, I have a question more so on the adult realm of all of you have told me that you went back into speech therapy as Mm. an adult. And so this is kind of, um, you know, I feel like, I don't feel like I know as an SLP, (laughs) once the kids get to middle school, they, we all know middle school is just so awkward for all of us. Um, And I feel like, yeah, yeah. And it's just like for every kid, regardless of whether they have a disability or not, or like speech issues. And so I feel, you know, I know that when I worked in the middle schools, they were going through a period of trying to just accept who they are and they don't want to go to speech therapy anymore. The majority Mm -hmm. of them, like if they had a list or a residual R or something like that. So this is like a big power struggle with parents who are like, no, you have to go, you have to go. Um, and so, I mean, there's, there's adults who are like, no, this is me. I don't need to improve my speech. I don't, this is how I talk and I've accepted who I am. And then there's other people like all three of you who are like, mm, you know, for ver- whatever reason that I have, I want to go back and just see if I can improve it. And I actually have people ask me from time to time on my social media handles, um, would it, would it be worth it for me to go back as an adult? So I want actually all of you to speak to that. We know Jordan's answer. So we're going to start with Kelsey, um, but I still want you to speak to it, Jordan, when they're done. Um, and just say, was it worth it? And why, like, why did you do it? Was it worth it? And would you recommend another individual with apraxia that's an adult go back? Um, I had a similar story, like you said, middle school, about fifth grade is when I, I chose to drop out of speech and my, my parents and, you know, my IP, IP team, um, supported my decision and um I still was on a 504 but I just didn't I didn't go to speech anymore have an IEP anymore um and I went back then in college in late college I guess about 20 21 when I went back um and I went back because I wanted to be an SLP and I started doing my um practicum at that point and in real life I was noticing I was having a hard time and I wanted to up my confidence um like I'm okay making errors around kids and, you know, showing them that, oh, hey, I make errors too. Like it's okay. But there's certain like sounds that. I was still really not that stimulable for at that point. And so I wanted to get a point where I um, was stimulable or when I could, I thought, uh, the other thing I was struggling with, with I, I would hear a sound and I, um, at that point, wasn't able to distinguish if it was correct or not. For example, I'll leave, I, I use visual phonics, leaves versus <laughs> leaves. Um, I couldn't discriminate between those two. And so I went back to get help with that uh, discrimination and then the sounds and then saying my name because people always thought I had a different name than I do. And I loved it when I went back. I um, was able to meet my goals and, you know, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with my speech now and I'm confident as an SLP and can discriminate the sounds I need to now. And I I highly recommend it for people that want to go back, but also I'm all for acceptance and you know living your life if you want to do that too so that's That's awesome awesome. thank you thanks um so with me I stopped going to speech therapy in ninth grade and it wasn't really my like it was me my family's choice um but we stopped because I wasn't getting the service that I deserved 
um, I saw my SLP maybe once every two months at oh. my school. So we decided Uh-oh. it wasn't worth it. Yeah. And so my family helped me instead with my own speech and was helping me like get to where I am. And it wasn't until I came to Central and one of my amazing professors in my um uh, in my um major classes, mm-hmm. she asked me, she was like, um, have you received speech services before? And I said yes. And she was like, you know, um, Central offers free um, speech services again for students. I was like, oh, they do? She was like, yeah, if you want to go back, you're more than welcome to. So that day I signed up to go back to um, speech and I don't regret it at all. I love going to speech every day. Um, I am making huge progress, especially on my R's. Um, and um, I love it and I encourage it. Like if you want to go back to speech, but you are scared to go back or you feel like it's you're too old to, you're never too old. You can always go back and get the help that you deserve because you have to advocate for yourself. And that's exactly what I'm about to be doing. And I'm very thankful to continue speech services even when I'm in graduate school. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love both mm-hmm. of those messages. Jordan, I know I that too. meeting goals was something that you like to talk about on your social media handles. That's something that really pumps yes. you up. Yes, I loved reaching goals. So as I had went, so it's I, um, so as I had went back whenever I was actually 20 years old, so at the same age as Kelsey, it sounds like. Um, and it's I personally chose to go back because it's when I was a kid and when I was in sixth grade and such and I've talked very publicly about this but I was mis mistreated within the SL SLP room and awful awful things that shouldn't have happened to me um happened and I just lost trust with SL SLPs completely and I just was like I'm not going back because I was trying to pro 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 protect my own self but it's but it's as I grew up I had just like noticed these different difficulties rise up um, that um, they really didn't prep me for it as a kid. Because um, when you're a kid, it's a whole different setting than from when you're an adult. There's different things that they don't prep you for. So I just made the choice to go back. And it was one of the best things I've ever, ever did for my own Self. I actually chose it. I filled out the paperwork. I did everything for that. And um, I learned how to gain back trust with SLPs. And I had a amazing SLPs during that time. And um, I just really wanted to talk more louder because I used to talk really, really quiet. Um, and I just also just wanted to feel more comfortable comfortable with who I am and I felt like I achieved that that's awesome yeah I love that message (laughs) from all of you (laughs) um so I'm like it is a praxi awareness month um so this is like an exciting month for all of us I feel like we all get happy and everyone gets energized and there's just like the community is all out there you know posting and sharing and it's just (laughs) super fun Um, you know, I want to know, uh, what your like vision of the future is when it comes to apraxia and what you'd like to see in the future. (laughs) I like this. Yeah. And this will be for all of you, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so let's start with Kelsey. Um, Or, Give me a second. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want a second absolutely. or you want me to start with someone else, your choice. I'll need a second to think. Okay. Um, Shelby, do you need a second? I know Jordan can just go off. So either way, do you want to <laughs> do you want to go or next or do you want Jordan to go? I have um, a few things. Okay, say. go ahead. Um, I would love to see more um 
SLPs with apraxia or different types of speech disorders in our field because we need more of that. We need to show kids that they can do what they want to do and go after their dreams, even if they have this type of disability, like nothing is stopping us. And I want to see that more. Oh, that gave me chills. I just love that so much. That's right. Nothing is stopping you. And it just, you know, I feel like the trajectory of apraxia has really looked, you know, it's like, it looks to me like how stuttering used to be. That used to be the thing with stuttering. Oh, don't tell a kid they stutter. Don't talk about it in front of them because it'll create shame. And then children who stuttered grew up and were like, um, we knew that something was wrong. We were going to speech therapy. Thanks for creating that shame unnecessarily instead of just owning it. And then there are professors. I saw this one. Oh, I can't remember his name, but he totally stutters. And he gave all, he gives a whole talk on how, you know, effective, like on how, I don't know. It's just, you know, people could have had the same criticism for him too. And he's like a legit expert now in stuttering, you know? And like, yeah, like, because Mm -hmm. you need people with the actual disabilities in the field that they're treating, you know, because even me, like there's things I can clinically see on the outside that I make, maybe can Mm -hmm. make judgments on, but internally, when we do these panels, like every single person talks about something internally that's going on um, in terms of their speech that I don't necessarily see clinically. So how would I know that unless I actually had someone tell me because I'm not a person with apraxia. So anyways, I just, I love that. Jordan. Um, it is what I would like to see more in the future and such is really just people owning it. Um, I feel like it's, is really, really key as I feel like there is such, such shame with many, many many people and i really think it's because many people think that you will outgrow a praxia when you don't it's a lifelong disorder like we have said so it is once they come to that realization it creates shame and they do wonder that and they maybe don't want to put themselves out there and such and as I want to change the narrative about that and be like no own it a accept it and embrace it too as I really don't want to see parents um you know go see an SLP and then it's they say hey it is your child has a Praxia, and I and I would like us to focus on the positives of it and actually celebrate it and and celebrate the child as well versus the other way a round of oh well we need to fix their talking we need to get this and that no it's we need to help they're talking so they can co- communicate with the outside world and such. But the goal is never to fix a person with a disability. It's to support, love, and include them. And the list could go on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Kelsey. Um, I definitely agree with both of them. Um, but from a SLP pers- pers- perspective, um, I would like there to be more research in the area. Um, cause I know like when I was in a proxy of therapy, when I was a kid, it was all oral motor exercises and, you yeah. know, we know, those aren't really effective now. Um, at least when I was young, little Kelsey, um, <laughs> and now there's a ton more research out there, but there's still just, I mean, in our field, we just need more research still. <laughs> and I love yeah. it. You know, we, we see some certain themes, um, you know, with dyspraxia and apraxia or dyslexia and apraxia and different things, but Absolutely. more research on how those are related and how we can address them best. Um, and then just more research on, I think, on the, the mental health side of it too. And, um, you know, the, the fatigue, like the, the talking fatigue yeah. of the day, you know, having to think one. about how to talk all day, <laughs> it's really tiring. Um, it's tiring I'm like oh. <laughs> by the end <laughs> I'm crashed out yeah um just more more research <laughs> would be great 
and then more awareness when we get that research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had kids like parents will take pictures of their kid asleep in the car seat when they leave my office. Like it oh, is wow, exhausting really? work. I mean, and I had this one girl, she's one who I wouldn't even expect would be falling asleep. Like she seemed very high energy compliant, like no behaviors, no avoidance behaviors. Um, but yeah, every time her mom would be like, it took a minute this time and she's out. <laughs> oh, so wow. yeah, that fatigue is, right. um, Jordan, you talk about that, you know, a lot too. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a real thing. Well, I love that. So basically what I'm hearing, you know, is Shelby wants to see more people in the field to support, you know, our um, little people with childhood apraxia speech. Jordan wants to see acceptance and a place where we do not have this ableist notion that we need to fix a child, but that we have the notion that we're going to help them be their best self with apraxia and all. And Kelsey wants to see That's more cool. research and have that research get out there, which of course will lead to better treatments, better outcomes, and more awareness. So I love that. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, oh, Jordan, what do you like to say? Like, I think we just took everybody to church. I mean, <laughs> everybody's church. Let's preach. Let's pray. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Any final thoughts from anyone? Maybe any thoughts, anything that you would like to say to maybe a young, maybe a young person who has a, a, a apraxia that might be watching this. Um, some rough thoughts of mine. Um, I would say it's, a, it's okay to be frustrated and upsetting when you're not understood or when you have to repeat yourself over and over again. It, it is frustrating. Oh. And, you know, and to, if the child and or the IEP team, whoever it is, decides to use alternative communication, like an iPad or sign or anything um, to not be embarrassed to use those other forms of communication, yes. because they are still communication and still language. Thank you, Kelsey. You just took me to church straight up. Okay. <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> I, I wore my sign language shirt. I, told them I love this. <laughs> I love that. I think I would say is that um, the little wins is what counts. Like you, uh, if you've been struggling on wood and you finally get it, celebrate it. No matter how small it is, like it's a win. You, you did it. You did it. And just like remember like it's going to take time and it's going to be worth it in the end and just keep pushing through and you got this. <laughs> ah, you guys are so great. I love all of you so much. I want to stay on here forever, but my Zoom's going to run out. <laughs> oh, no. Jordan, did you want to add anything before I sign us off? Um, yeah, sure. Um, it's, I would probably say to young, to it is to young people who do, who do have a, a praxia as I do know that it's hard. I know that it's not easy. I do know what it feels like you, you literally fight for every single word that comes out of your mouth. You fight for that, for that word or for that phrase or for whatever thoughts you want to come out to come out but it's all worth it in the end and it's what really matters the most is that if you self accept your own self for exactly the person who you who you are there and it's you know just and um and it's just like how shell and it's just like how shell has said and faced and such there are going to be people who try to tear you down or try to make you a a a ashamed of who of who you are but those people's a pin a pin a opinions do not matter it is the only person a pin a and then that matters is your own selves about you. So take that with a grain of salt and shake it off or do what you have to do. But um, that would be mine. Sorry, I get all like 
I want to bring them badly and dance to kids. That's what I do. <laughs> that is what you do. I know. Yeah. I mean, all of you are here for that. Like, you know, Absolutely. Kelsey's a, a SLP for that reason. That's why Shelby wants Which to be. And then awesome. you've got your your handles mm -hmm. where you do that. So, um, yeah. Well, anyways, this is uh, awesome. This was so awesome. Like I, I loved, loved this one. Me too. I could talk way more, but I know that the time's <laughs> going to run. Like, it is i know well thank <laughs> you kelsey and no. shelby for being the future faces of speech language pathology and bringing a voice for our future children with childhood of practice speech i feel like i have goosebumps just saying that but you literally are the future and our kids with apraxia literally need people like you in the field that is my personal really opinion do. um but my personal opinion is correct <laughs> 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 okay laura <laughs> so there you go um so anyway thank you you guys i hope you have a great day and i'll air this as soon as i can <laughs> <laughs> sounds great thank you all bye bye, -bye. bye.